Holy Pampers. My name's Sean, and I'm going to give you an introduction. It's all going to be verbal at first, but I will show you some converted vamps later on. Uh, it's basically an introduction to people who want to build their own Tampa van. Uh, how I do it and how I explain it, it's not cast in stone, it's just ways I've found and layouts which I find work very well, and also the choice of van to convert. I don't want to sound preachy, everybody will go their own way, but I'm just explaining how I've economically found to do it. First of all, the choice of van. There's Volkswagen Transporter, which is everybody's choice, but for economic reasons, they're, they're just out of most people's budgets. You can afford to buy them, but when they come into a, my kind of budget, the mileage is what they've done is just absolutely astronomical. So I've discounted Volkswagens. I tend to go for uh, the later transit vans. Reason I go for transit vans uh, from what they call the Mark 6, which is about 2000 onwards. Um, they're pretty reliable, they're economical, and they're capable of doing some really high mileages uh, without too much trouble, providing they've got a full service strip, don't let mileage put you off. The other good thing about the transit is you get more, more space for your money. They're pretty flat sided, so when you're building your furniture, you can go straight up walls, whereas on the Volkswagens and Toyota Hiuses, the, the sides board in like that so you lose a lot of space and it's more difficult to convert. Engines. The later transits I'm talking about from 2000 on are 2 litre, 2.2 and 2.4. The majority of the 2.4 ones are rear wheel drive which is it's still a good engine but because it's a rear wheel drive and the prop shaft runs front to back you lose a lot of headroom, but if you go for the 2 litre and 2.2, they're front wheel drives, so you gain quite quite a, about four inches of headroom in the in the rear. If you're converting the semi high top, which my latest van is, and I did it purely and simply because I wanted a short wheel base van, semi high top because that'd fit in my garage. So that's what I opted for and I'm 5 foot 11 and I can stand up, I can't stand up straight, I have to stoop a bit but it's, it's comfortable and it's a comfortable working van. Uh, the short wheel base is 8 foot long, uh, your, your load carrying space, so that allows you a 6 foot bed plus 2 foot for a small kitchen, which is ideal for, for what you want because Basically, very few people actually eat in the van. Most people, they just the dubbing's on toast, they warm a kettle up, and, and, and they'll eat out because you can you can do it fairly cheaply. But having said that, you can still get a two burner uh, hob and a grilling. So, in my particular short wheel base high top, semi high top, should I say, uh, I've got a microwave in it, so uh, I can cook a substantial meal. Uh, if, if I need to, and uh, on, on occasion I have done, and I've, I've had some outstanding results. Back to the transits, the 2 litre, the 2.2, the 2.4, the engines are cam chains, not cam belts. So, whereas with the Volkswagens and the Toyotas, uh, Citroën Relays, Renault Traffics, the Vauxhall Vavaros, their belt drives and you get no warning if your belt's going to go. It's going to go and bump your engine's gone. So straight away, as soon as you buy one, to be on the safe side, you've got to have your belt changed. Whereas transits, because the chain drive, they do get a warning. They do start to rattle before they snap. I mean, you might listen to a transit engine when it's rattling and be alarmed. But 
it's, it's just warning you that it, it's due for a cam, cam chain fitting. So it's not a ruined engine, it's just take it into the garage, get a cam chain. Having said that, if it's got a full service of strength, uh, I've had vans with 300,000 miles on and still on the same cam chain. So uh, it's, it's not really an issue. More of an issue is make sure it's got full service of strength. Um, re reliability, second to none. Miles per gallon. Uh, I've had a 2.4 rear wheel drive, full high top, long wheel base. Uh, two and all over in it, averaged 30 to gallon. Uh, I'm running a 2.2 front wheel drive at the moment. Um, mileage per gallon wise. Worst I've had is 33, best is 40, but it's averaging 37 to a gallon, which is uh, equivalent to, to most modern day cars on uh, uh, petrol engines. So when you bear in mind how useful they are and, and uh, what you can do with it, uh, I think that's, that's, that's a sacrifice worth to make. That, that's, that's a good, good fuel economy to me. Um, another good thing about it, transit, uh, put fitting windows, uh, they're bonded windows nowadays and they're an absolute doddle to fit, uh, a, a lot of companies will only charge you £50 to fit a window anyway because uh, it, it's such an easy job. Um, they're more expensive if you go for an opening window, so uh, just for example a non-opening window probably £60, an opening window be looking at 150. Uh, if you're on a tight budget just put an opening window where you're going to be cooking to, uh, to get rid of some of your fumes or where, where you're going to have your kettle and leave all your others non, uh, non opening but uh, if you're not to a budget it's, it's nice to put a couple of openers in so that if it's a hot day you can, you can let, uh, you can let uh, the air blow through which is, which is always handy because Another thing, if you're converting your van, insulation. You might think, well, I'm only going to use it in summer, so I'm not insulated because I won't use it in winter. But insulate keeps it cool in summer and warm in winter and it stops condensation. So, really, for how much it costs to insulate a van, it's really. So that it really, uh, as regards the vans, uh, I'll be adding a later video, uh, end of this week probably, um, to show you the van which has just been completed, I'll show it with base semi high top, uh, 2009 Transit, and uh, I hope you like it. The layout I've gone for is two single beds, which does make up into a double. You can go the what's what's known as a rock and roll bed way with, uh, with your kitchen units the full length of the driver's side. And you finish up with a rock and roll bed which is only three quarter width, which if, if you're on the heavy side or if you're like me, you scrum about in your sleep and you're rolling all over and waving your arms about, then really you need a big one. So I, I, I go for the two singles, making up into a if you go away fishing with one of your mates then you're not in a double bed, you've got two singles. If you go away with your partner, your girlfriend, your wife, you can make it up into a double. Plus, you get loads of storage underneath. Right, uh, they're the two main layouts. The, the other reason I go for the two single beds with a walkthrough down the middle is you can also use your van for carrying, if you've got to go to the DIY centre and pick up eight before sheets, which are always a bugbear to carry, if you've got the two single beds, the eight before sheets will still fit down the middle. If you've got the Volkswagen route with a rock and roll bed, you can't fit anything long and wide like that in it. So uh, your camper becomes a one trip pony, that's all it can do. You, you can do camping, you can have day trips, but if, 
you, if you convert it to two singles, you can, it can still be an everyday workhorse. You can put bicycles down the middle, if you're just going out for a day and there's a gap in the middle, you can put two bikes in the bike and you can be out for a day and have a run in, in your bikes. Or if you've any DIY to do, you've got any eight before panels, wood, wood, plywood or plasterboard, anything, the van is still useful as a van, as well as your everyday transport and also Right, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction. Look out for video number two, showing you around my van, and uh, I hope I've given you some ideas to think about uh, when it comes to converting your own van. Thank you very much for your time. Stay tuned.